So I've decided to make this little video for two reasons really. One is just basically to tie in with the 1835 pit disaster video and the other one is just so that you can have a look at some of the things in this fantastic old churchyard. St Peter's Church is the oldest church in Wall's End, originally built in 1809 and then modernised later in 1892. What you can see now is what it ended up looking like after it was modernised. There's some quite interesting sort of gothic-y little things, whether you can see them or not, all around the church. So we're going to head over to where the memorials are for the two pit disasters on the wall at the other side of the churchyard. It's not a very nice day, it's a bit cloudy and well yuck, but never mind. So on the way across we actually do pass this gravestone here and this one is actually in, in memory of several of the people who died in the 1821 pit disaster. So you can, I don't think you can see the names on it but there is a photo, well there's not a photo if you're watching this, <laughs> anyway ignore me, I'm talking rubbish. So heading right over to the other side of the churchyard, you can see I'm walking a bit quick and I don't like to walk too quick when I'm doing this because obviously it just all sort of makes you feel a bit sick. So hope that you can see the two plaques. One is obviously the 1835 one which is that one there and the other one is the 1821. which was recently put up on the 23rd of October 2021. So we're going to walk down towards where I believe the people are buried from the 1835 pit disaster. The graves were unmarked, but there was always a, a thought that they were down towards the bottom end of the churchyard and you know there's enough space for both mass graves to be there for both the 1835 and the much earlier 1815 one. The 1815 one was Heaton Main Colliery but the majority of the people who worked there that were killed in that disaster did come from Wall's End hence why they were buried here and there is also a memorial plaque inside the church but the church isn't open at the moment so I can't actually go in and show you that plaque on the wall. So when you get down to this bottom corner of the churchyard, looking at Google Maps and various other different things and trying to sort of work out where you think the graves would be, I'm not very good at that kind of thing so I don't know sort of what the land's meant to look like but I've got a rough idea. So I would say that this is the area here closest to me where I believe the 1835 miners are buried. And then right down in the very bottom corner which I'm just going to zoom on, I'm not going to go down because it's been raining and it's a bit wet and muddy but right down in that bottom corner I think that is where you'll find the people who were buried from the 1815 pit disaster. The 1821 pit disaster they seem to have been buried in in little graves in like with headstones and in separate areas not so much in a mass grave as the other two were. So turning around and having another look at the church. It is a very impressive church and that is a very impressive tree which has unfortunately had a little bit of damage from the recent storms that we've had here so there is a huge branch that's snapped off and it's lying on the ground there so 
we'll walk round this side of the church and we'll come back round to another one of the headstones from the 1821 pit disaster so you can see there's quite a lot of of graves dotted around headstones dotted around however there's also a lot more people buried in here that you, you wouldn't know about because unfortunately they don't have headstones and it's very difficult with most churchyards to find out where people are buried because a lot of churches don't have records in the same way as say church bank cemetery or holy cross cemetery and those that did have records over the years they've they've got lost with various different things such as for example when this church was modernized it's quite possible that, that was the time that any records of the 1835 burial site was lost i'm quite sure that i'm just waffling on here and talking a lot of rubbish but i do try not to talk a lot of rubbish but i do try so when you're coming round this side you can see um st peter's care home in the distance obviously that used to be where St Peter's School was and I'm sure there's probably a lot of people remember St Peter's School probably a lot of people went there it's lovely you can hear the birds tweeting and it sounds really nice but you can trust me it's absolutely freezing my little fingers are frozen So coming round from the back of the church again, like I say, it is a very impressive church, very nice church. This particular gravestone here is in memory of a Dr. James Milne of Walls End. However, I haven't actually really been able to find a great deal out about him, but he must have been very well thought of and very well liked because that was in its day a very impressive headstone the part that's there on the ground that you can see obviously was previously on the top and it's also got a bust of presumably what dr james Milne looked like So coming round back again towards the front of the church, um, you can see the current Burnside School in the distance there and you can also see the property company's building on the top of Church Bank there which once used to be Strettles or Joseph Mullins or whichever one you want to remember. Coming round to this side of the church, I'm not actually sure, I don't know whether anybody can tell us what these little stone pillars were for. Somebody's bound to know, but I don't actually know. And you can see signs in the corner over there of another tree that was unfortunately damaged in the recent storms. Doesn't matter where you go, there's always some divvy with a mobile phone. Derek. So as you come round to the front of the church again, and you come to, to this part of the entrance, you can see the old stocks, which don't have the top part on anymore. The top part came off some time ago. It probably just damaged with age, etc and that's now kept inside of the church. But whenever they have events or anything going on in the church, that's always put out so that people can see it properly how it would have looked. I'm sure lots of people can remember this church, got married here, christened here, came to Sunday services here because it was a very, very popular church and I believe it still is. So as you come round to this last part of the video that I'm going to do because I don't want to bore everybody completely as we're going to come to this particular headstone which unfortunately is lying down and years and years and years of damage of weather etc you can can't read it as well as you used to be able to 
and however this one is another memorial for some of the people who died in the 1821 pit disaster but as I say weather has really taken its toll on that headstone I took a photo of that headstone several years ago and you could really see it no problem at all but unfortunately now you can't so anyway that hopefully is a little tour around the churchyard a little bit of the different couple of different headstones of important headstones as I look upon them and this is also hopefully I'll just do move back so as you can see a, a different view of the church this is hopefully also going to be the site eventually of the 1835 memorial that me and some other people are hoping to be able to organize at some point in time so i hope you've enjoyed that and hope i haven't bored you with me waffle and thank you for watching